Price Three Corner. So yes, so starting from the the uh, the plan or principles towards um, uh, play testing, um, we uh, we could uh, if you have like Pablo, Jakub, anything to add to it um, uh, to the text written in Telegram. Or new mm, thoughts? Not particularly. I, I, I laughed a bit because at some point I remembered we were once making fun of uh, sort of like this American way of making companies out of um, giving advice. What was What's the name? Yeah, yeah. When you're... Um, consultancy? Yeah, consultancy. <laughs> consultancy based uh, businesses. And I was laughing like, ah, this could very well become like a consultancy based mm. business model, right? Like we come to your organization, we analyze it through our mm. games yeah. perspective and give you like this outcome of how could, you could be more engaged in certain ways, right? So I just had like this moment of and realization. We turn your company into a circus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like, like as an operation, I don't like it i don't mind such things even being part of the palette uh but like of course turning into a consultancy company is often a death knell to anything innovative but but as a kind of counter example like linux foundation like before it was the mega thing that it's now i mean one of the main one of the strategies of Lin, uh, linux was Kind of consultancy of course like here's how you can use linux etc and and still is in a way but it's it's of course kind of grown from there like quite a bit it's an interesting foundation by the way like to look at um but yeah um um but also what do you think about it now is it still good and let's meet kyle also like what do you think about it as well like uh, any any comments in terms of what you read or thought or discussed last time? I like it. It's a good plan. I just don't know what's a good starting point, maybe. But in general, I think it's a good way forward. Yeah. Um, so that um, what I'm hearing is people want to move forward more than discuss it, but, but I, I, I think that's maybe good. Like in terms of the topic, I kind of took what we talked at the end and and tried to call, express that, which is kind of like let's like start talking about what kind of cases would be interesting, and maybe bring some example cases. I have a couple. Um, but uh, but they can also be kind of born like, hey, what about this one kind of way. And then um, on the side of like the mechanics, I have a kind of a, let's call it an organizational pragmatic per perspective towards the fields. Because we have now many structures, whether it's the kind of in the uh, March period when we're at, um, the kind of basic concepts from rights to uh, offers to um, to roles and etc. And then there's the OBOC, which is a kind of a codification of those. But I, I have a like a, as a kind of alternate take, not not kind of competing with that, but like looking from a different point of view, a certain fields uh, thing to go through, which is quick to go through. But I have that uh, in the back pocket for the fields part. So, um, if do you like that approach, like uh, surveying, mapping out a little bit of cases, potential case areas and particular cases, and then um, uh, looking a bit on these fields um, and which one you would like to start? Yeah, I, I, I like that personally. And what what one more thing that comes to my mind is that I, I at some point we were. Um, I think considering some uh, kind of visual um, recording tool like my yeah. or something. So yeah. I'm wondering whether it might be time to perhaps like start playing even even like within the call, perhaps just 
that someone could mm. be uh, recording and trying to uh, capture some of the um, patterns or yeah yeah that's mm. that's a good idea and also a memento for, for me because i did something which is not much but um let me actually do um now um uh, so i i like i thought like it might not be the best form but it might be at least a good start to so i made a google drive folder um and put obok in the drive folder but what i didn't do but to do now is i could share the drive folder itself in terms of editing rights whatnot to everyone uh, uh let me do that because i mean i'm not saying it has to be uh cool do uh drive slash docs but um uh it's at least some kind of a tool with many different options of uh because of course in the drive folder you can put the various uh, applications that they have let me just see what's the uh how do you share the drive in a folder uh share um do, 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 do. okay uh anyone want the link or should i restrict it i mean like it's maybe it's not even um uh because like, maybe it should be done in sort of like uh like that you have to get the link rather than having anyone with the link because there is a potential bleed over a link could be traveled elsewhere and if you have because we should also have writing rights to it. So, mm, but for now, I mean, we could do the document anywhere and move it to the folder. Um, do, 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 uh, let me, do you all have Google addresses? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, what if I do this afterwards? Because it, it kind of takes time and kind of steps from the meeting. But like one possibility is to make the documents wherever and then move them to the folder. Because I think that means, yes, that means that the rights are updated to the folder's rights. So that's one possibility. But another point Jakub made, like that it would be a role and we could try testing with that role. Is there anyone who would be ready to take upon that role you mean the role of the visual sketcher or yeah we could even take different roles um i mean i, I can try if someone's mm -hmm. not um jumping on it enthusiastically <laughs> so um but i think do, do we have some kind of myro board or i think like one can be created for free, right? Or yeah, like if um, like really, I think one could give you the right to choose your meeting, essentially, because everything can be linked. So if you think of something to uh, open up uh, and just make it, and whatever the form is, because I, I think this is a kind of testing exploration session anyway. So so. Um, you, you can make it and we can see um, how do we place it uh, at best availability, etc. cetera. So, um, but yeah, um, but I'll make the drive folder after the session and like we can have the emails in there. And, like, uh, and uh, the, just for the reason that if uh, I was thinking maybe making different document types like one could be like taking these sort of small ideas in uh which we talked about and maybe google docs is not the optimal but it was the kind of quick solution that came to mind 
but anyway, like in terms of uh, which ones you would like to start with, um, uh, the cases or the fields, coming back to that question, Pablo, Mikhail, or Jakob even, because you didn't yet comment on that. I guess the Miro board could come in handy to do a mapping of both, just to be certain mm. about like um yeah what potential lies within each. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah, which one would you like to start with, cases or fields of gain structures? <laughs> I'm thinking. Uh... If we would go uh, cases first, would that actually help uh, defining the fields as well? Potentially, can help. Like, uh, like uh, we can we can certainly go either way. But like that's that's a possibility. Like I'm open for either because it um, for me it really doesn't matter. Let's do it that way. Yeah. All right, um, try to reboot the camera again. It keeps crashing. So, um, so cases, um, anybody, I have a couple, but, uh, but anybody would want to bring, so that wouldn't be me that starts. Um, the, so anybody have something in mind in terms of cases, whether it's like a particular case or an idea of a potential area? And Jakub, if you have a Myra board, you can also share the screen if you get that to that point. Yeah. I think I'm afraid I'm uh, on the top of my free board, so I seem I cannot create anymore. But if anyone had still a possibility to create a board in, in their account, then that would help. Mm -hmm. uh, do, 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 do. <laughs> Does anyone have like a, I can. I'm, I'm already, yeah, I already made one. So I could not, but I could maybe get one with another email. Sounds a bit messy, but I could do it. Uh, what's the exact address of it? I think I haven't used my report. It's my uh, Yeah. Check. Oh, my, yeah. Yeah, because I'm not sure if, like, mm, I know that for some time it was possible to create the boards for free. But I'm not sure if a new account still has the ability or if it's already paid paywalled, but I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure. Start a whiteboard. I can, I can try. Um, we can tolerate that. Now I could use my forever trash account for the Google, uh, well, I could use my access as well. It doesn't really matter. Like it's anyway, I'm going to. Uh... Um, let's see. Um, let's go with that one. I. Um, I think I will manage to have it, um, and I mm. can I'll set up your team. Hopefully, there are not many of these questions. I have a boring idea of a case. Maybe not one that we should choose, but one would we that we should not choose. But maybe it's interesting to discuss, mm. uh, which is, is just university since um 
I, I mean, you've mentioned you've been teachers. I've been a teacher. I'm now a student as well. So I know it's something we all know and relate to, but that's something, it's just a very immediate thought. Something sounds immediately boring to me as, as an analysis. Uh, and I'm not sure why. So that's why I'm maybe uh, saying that we should not do it. But mm -hmm. what's your opinion on that? Wait, like what was the exact point? I didn't I missed the uh, analyzing university as the case. Oh yes. Yeah. That's a that's a possibility. It's a big can of worms, but it's an yes. interesting can of worms. Yes. Yeah. Um it's already asking for e in emails for invitees. Uh I could add you here. I probably can add you later as well, but um uh but for example, Jakub, what's your do, 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 um, it's asking or, Gmail, Gmail accounts. Uh, Gmail, okay, wait. Yeah. I'm thinking of a, a funny one. Have you all gotten um, your vaccine? Or at least, uh, yeah? N that no, sadly, because I'm in Germany and the, the people who would give it to me are in Finland. And uh, I'm currently kind of like uh, waiting for the first clot to go over that I could get it from Germany. Vaccine um, limbo. Yeah, because vaccine I, limbo. Yeah. <laughs> I got mine here in Germany and the process, it was such a game. It was a quest. You enter <laughs> this facility, you gather signatures, you stay, you talk to a person, you're allowed to go to the next stage. Like it was such a bureaucratic kind of uh, adventure, I would say that mm -hmm. by the time I got my vaccine, I had forgotten that I was there for that. You know, I was just like <laughs> surviving the whole bureaucratic thing, uh, gathering the necessary steps to go further, which was kind, mm -hmm. kind of interesting. Yeah, it's, it's like a new genre, like bureaucratic yeah. survival games. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, living in Germany for me in a survival game. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it is like a well, Germany is an interesting country in terms of like uh, that it thinks that it's well organized, but one can have different opinions on that. Um, uh, but but it of, often leads to this sort of like a, a cor a labyrinth of corridors of things. Um, okay, so yeah, I had to go through a lot of different uh, various offers of do this and do that. But um, but it, the invite should be open to you and all of you. Like, but also to you, Jakob, if you're interested in doing that. So, if you get it, like, you could use that and screen share. And of course, that allows I think everybody to edit if you follow the invite at least. Um, so we can see where that goes. But Jakob, if you if that's enough to get you started, like. Uh, uh, you can you can see about that, but okay. So university uh, uh, was a proposal. Any other proposals? Yeah. Uh, just something something from the game side that came to my mind. Uh, uh, in many different uh, games, uh, at least if there is some sort of like avatar uh, in the play there is a, a kind of mechanic uh, called uh, inventory and uh, i'm thinking about inventory as like uh, uh, some sort of like uh, frame uh, through which you can access different like uh, uh, mechanics and uh, and objects like uh, some of the ob objects can be like uh, shared with other people uh, you can modify modify them uh, uh, through that uh, uh, frame and so on. But then I also started thinking that, of course, in, in some games there are guilds and stuff like that. And, mm -hmm. and these are made by uh, uh, more than one people. And, and they also have to kind of uh, share rights to this inventory or guild bank or something like that. And uh, I, I think that that is, that is also somewhat interesting. It is actually, I mean, in a way, because it's, these are kind of like two ends of the spectrum of the large and the, the very specific or general and specific university and inventory 
but I, if one could even think about like carrying the perspective of inventory to the case of university to combine them. It's a kind of one, so I would have a lot to say. I won't open it now on, on the different inventory structures and the inventive in inventory structures. Um, it's a it's a kind of an area that has been in play in the last couple of three four years maybe, um, two three four years uh, in in terms of design. Like one of the things that is happening in the RPG space is um, like inventory as damage. Is that you? There's no hit points, but if you uh, take damage, you lose an inventory slot, and uh, anyway, I already opened the can of worms. Close it now. So, so, uh, but it, it's a possibility as a perspective for, 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 uh, for universities. Um, but I mean that that could be a case. We could uh, we can see how long we take. Like, let's we could take these two and see what kind of emphasis there is, like, <clears throat> and how much time we want to spend. Do we want to change the case at some point? Yeah, and uh, I think it could be cool also because now uh, just play analyzing university, then mm. at some point we could switch to play kind of disrupting it. And yes, some That's of us would idea. be in the university. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a cool idea. Yeah. yeah. So maybe it's a longer case, but I think that sounds really cool. And we can we can evaluate whether we jump to that and how do we jump to that if we do. Um, I do have a lot to say about this because I've actually done, I even even have sketches, but still in the, because Pablo, you introduced the idea, you can, uh, and whomever really can start. I, uh, first of all, I love the idea of inventories, like that's really interesting. I'm already thinking of the different inventories I've encountered. Mm. But I have a, I don't know if it's totally related to inventories, but I had this experience when coming here to this university in, in Bremen, the University of the Arts in Bremen. Mm. Back in Mexico, I switched from a public university to a private one. Mm. So the culture, it was totally different in a private university. You pay, you're a client, everything's like clean, you don't own it. It's like there's a detachment um that i really struggled with and so when i came here to germany to do my interview before mm. getting accepted i immediately just arrived went to the bathroom and it was like totally full of graffiti mm. there was no paper in the in the toilet or in the sort of to dry your hands and immediately i was like ah this is great i love this place this <laughs> is just just makes me feel and home, you know, like this is a place that people live, that people use, that they're not constantly cleaning, removing the marks that people leave behind. Uh, it was sort of like this lack of inventory, you could say, in this case, made me feel very much at home in a way. So yeah, yeah. I just I just remember this experience. Yeah. Um, and also the kind of difference between public and private one is, is interesting. Like... Um, yeah, um, I have a lot of like structuring, um, s sketching from a couple of years ago towards the idea of distributed university. Mm. Uh, and how do you approach a distributed university as a topic? And like, what does that structurally mean that it's distributed? Like, um, like one of the key things to keep this short, not to hog the airspace again too much, but uh, I think an interesting point to start to think about universities, and this is not the only point, but I think it's a useful one, is to uh, to open the question of what is the value of university? And I would call it, roughly speaking, credit. By that, I'm, I'm saying it's, it's very much a social credit. That is, they have the power, uh, not just the governance, but kind of a power to say, that somebody is skilled at something and um and that value then is one of these key uh coordinators of of how a university starts to work and how what it builds itself around of it's 
once again, it's not the only perspective, but it gives this setup from top to bottom kind of a run of like, oh, it's actually you can see the whole thing as kind of um, distribution of that credit. Um, and well, the management is management of that distributor of the credit, but then the whole teaching system um, and the different tiers in it, etc., is distribution of that credit um, and forming this sort of packages to your character sheet of like university students and how much you need to get a certain credit and and then credits in different sizes like credit for a course and certain amount of courses or certain template of courses becoming a credit of a larger kind which ha but it's but it's all because it has certain social recognition well not all universities some are kind of nomadic or autonomous but but gen generally that there is social recognition of this credit the university has the kind of power to give it uh, that uh, is the key value that feeds or kind of trickles through the structure itself. I think on in repeat in currency design, you would call the diplomas mm. that you get like a nominal reputational yeah. currency. It's yes. non transactable, right? Like a certificate. Yes, so it's a yeah. It's That's a reputation the, system, roughly speaking. Yeah, uh, I, I there was a, there's an interesting case in a u, public univer, cinema university in Mexico, which is very famous, very well regarded. That um, was not actually uh, it would not give you a bachelor's, even though it was structured more or less like a bachelor's program. Mm -hmm. And at some point, it um, it started being a bachelor's officially. So the plan had to become more rigid structurally. And then people would regard it less valuable now that it, that it had become an official bachelor's mm -hmm. than before it was. Mm -hmm. So yeah, because film industry, a creative industry, value different types of skill sets, right? So yeah. that was kind of interesting in the sense that making it fall into a broader category and recognizing it in a legal sense actually mm -hmm. made it less valuable in like its broader um yeah with the film community yeah that was, that, that was yeah. interesting yeah it's it's very much the, like the val value of this credit becomes the politics of university um but it's also if you start changing that like what gives the value um because because like thinking of different university structures the the getting the, the power to get this credit is very much a stranglehold it's it's like of course it's nations first um in many countries but then uh private universities play all kinds of politics and pay a lot of money of course to to gain this sort of a credit of um, or, or use a lot of time and effort and money to build this reputation to have this sort of credit in itself. So what if you change that? And what if you, if you say, okay, we're not gonna compete. We're not gonna even try to go towards this sort of official, officiating power. And I think it's the point where you can start to think about distributed universities because yeah, like it's very hard to make a distributed structure that comes from this sort of kind of a centralized power node. I mean, you can, but it's, it's much more limited. Um, uh so like i i think there is a room to i'll keep this short again because i'm talking too much again but um so there there is some room to think about the um the sources of uh, which are in some reputation systems as well is like others crediting others which is not an easy field because there is exploitation possibilities and whatnot, but it's also a kind of like interesting field in itself, and certainly I think plays some some part in such systems. Um, there is also really interesting cases. Um, I'll swear I stopped after this. Uh, in in uh, in visual, uh, like graphic design and particularly uh, visual arts, and the reason being why visual arts has a lot of these sort of YouTube universities and whatnot, like school is and, and so on. I think the reason is because they have a, such a good uh, documental one-to-one -one 
proof of the needed skill. So somebody looking for a working place, it really kind of sticks around their portfolio because, okay, we can see you painted this. And it's, it's, it's the main proof, like the, the person in game studio or whatnot um, who is looking at your graph, um, skills of conceptual artists, it's not going to care too much about your titles. It's looking at the pictures. And because you have such a kind of like a level of proof in the document, I think it, it's one of the main reasons why it has allowed already the development of this sort of more nomadic universities. Um, because they don't need so much credit because the actual document uh, uh, recording is so um, uh, so strong a proof in a way um, in itself. And um, so this sort of reputation one to other and then thinking about records out of the box, like, um, uh, like, like it immediately opens up this question like actually university whatever text you write whatever you do there should anyway be much more coordinated towards something that is um considers the outside as a possibility uh, so um but like what if you think about that out of the box what kind of possibilities open there okay i'll shut up for now My robot is looking great. This is so fun to watch. Um, it's very disorganized so far. I'm just like putting in random post-its, but I think we could perhaps at some point mm. like zo 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 zoom on to like the individual concepts. And perhaps mm. what I started doing is like when there is character sheet, we could be tagging or labeling it with our element like character or move or field or, or whatever, and then perhaps try putting some order on the yeah. mess. Yeah. yeah, we could, yeah. Um, there's even a possibility of having a board as a character sheet, but that's another, um, or an inventory. But um, Mikael, any thoughts? Uh, not directly related to to what you said, but uh, I was just, I, I started thinking about like this, uh, well, pre-internet, uh, middle age, uh, early middle age uh, monasteries mm. and how, how they had this like uh, system of like this, uh, how, how like uh, information, mail uh, uh, moving between, between them uh, and, and, and the kind of uh, almost like secretiveness uh, that they, that they of course held and so on. And then came a little later, then came universities. Uh, mm. What was it a few hundred years uh, later? Maybe, uh, 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 well, I, I do not remember exactly, but but anyways, and, and the same thing, they kind of uh, replaced the importance of the monasteries mm. as a kind of information network. And then, uh, uh, but, but the same thing kind of information uh, flowing uh, and and being shared uh, some way uh, or or something like that, uh, giving the idea at least giving the impression impression that the information is kind of being shared and so on. And then I was just uh, started thinking about this like a some sort of like distributed network uh, compared to this like hierarchical uh, uh, structure. Uh, you need a lot of like. Uh, uh, information flowing, uh, even if it's uh, under one umbrella or organization or something, mm. so on. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, um. This is this is really interesting. Uh, sorry, you're gonna say something? No, no, it's too yeah. yeah, in in how um, the where does the power or the legitimacy of universities, what does it rely on? Where does the power emanate from? Um, how can that be decentralized further? Mm. That, is, that is to me a very interesting question. I guess it sort of relies on this peer-to-peer um, -peer crediting, uh, validating others' um, reputation and um, assessment. Mm. Um, 
but yeah, I, to me, universities have this very monolithic characteristic that is every day becoming more and more obsolete or yeah, let's say um, even counter counterproductive in a way that, that feels um, sad. Yeah, a couple of thoughts like uh, as a kind of framing that is almost already present, but it's good to kind of highlight it. University as a game, especially if it kind of amounts to a distributed uh, university structure would be rather interesting, like giving game rules um, uh, for it. Like uh, it's, it's an issue I've been kind of slightly exploring back two years ago and i think it's actually possible uh, like uh to do that um but it's an it's an interesting to way to look at it is to package that thing in a game um yeah uh that's one thought second the monasteries uh yeah i won't open this can too much but for some reason i know quite a bit about this it there is a kind of period from 700s to 900s. It's really interesting, which is a kind of like a um, kind of monastery culture that starts to form the next step of more organized monastery culture, which then becomes universities, which, uh, which is a huge influence in terms of learning and, uh, and so the pathway actually goes quite long um like it, like you have hundreds of years going in this path but it's but i definitely agree with mikhail like that there that there was this sort of almost like a transition where uh from uh, the universities grew out of monastery structuring and um and and the, it's very much a, actually kind of utilized the concept of truth which was in the monasteries it was kind of a seeking of truth which then became the question for universities and and that was one of the key areas of transition when you come to early renaissance and so but but yeah it's a really interesting area then actually uh leads leads me to to think about about the about the kind of wars of the organization and and the kind of uh, what uh, Pablo said about uh, about universities be becoming less uh, important uh, one thing probably in order to make the kind of uh, metamorphosis needed uh, might be uh, to kind of uh, uh, how you can how you can kind of organize or create this like more more breathing uh, kind of uh, borders of the of the organization so that so that so that you cannot actually uh, uh, say where where the, where does the university uh, kind of start or where does it end or so on yeah like that so i one could start analyzing towards that if we kind of go one step towards kind of mechanics uh like it, it's easy to start from right because like you can take the question of and useful i think uh you can take the question of like for example who can say initiate the course um it's another question what does the course entail and what does it uh uh somebody put a good word that was not power what was the uh, I think Pablo, you mentioned like legitimacy, like um, what is the legitimacy of the course? That those are other uh, questions, but but one can start with the sort of question of who has the right to initiate uh, a course in the wide sense, whatever course entails. And of course, then you can set the condition that what if everyone has that right? Like to start from from that kind of simple simple but complex basis. Now you come to then to this question of, okay, if everyone has that right to offer it, let's put it that way, then you can set a second phase, which is like those offers are, you can put uh, kind of acknowledgement mechanics 
where let's say the course becomes valid uh, after it's first offered and after enough people acknowledge it. Uh, not even participate in it, but just say, I, I like this. I think this should be part of the university. Um, um, maybe participation is already an acknowledgement, but because then that opens the kind of system design field of, okay, like, is everybody an equal acknowledgement? How many acknowledgements you need or what kind of acknowledgements you need? Uh, is there some thing that when something goes to some field like if there is a category system of like that this is in a certain area are, are some acknowledgements more powerful than others in a particular field all these but those are all design decisions after that like um, and of course they are complex but it kind of opens the space to that design uh, field um, so um, um, I think it's an interesting one to think that you you start from everybody being able to offer a new limit from there. Maybe because I think it's easier later to say no. Actually, we we just give this to certain people. Um, uh, but uh, but I uh, but I think the kind of design issues you face if everybody's able to offer it are the kind of good design issues to face anyway in this kind of structure. Yeah, this, this sounds similar to how this course works, where you're able to offer a course, people are able to sign up. Um, we actually in the hackathon, the last Holochain hackathon was based around an app of this nature, mm -hmm. of, of decentralized course learning platform. That's interesting. Um, I'm, I'm having like a, suddenly I realized something that it's, I think, important for me to mention, mm -hmm. which is the university's um, relation to the state, which mm -hmm. cannot go uh, on unmentioned in mm -hmm. the sense, that, for example, I'm here with a student visa, right? Mm -hmm. the university is the reason I'm able to be in Germany for more than a certain time and acquire additional rights. Yeah, yeah. And um, I mean, I'm in a privileged situation. I had a comfortable life back in Mexico, but I know a lot of people whose student status is the only way in which they can probably have like a perspective on the future, right? Mm -hmm. Like they cannot go back to, um, and that's, yeah, that's like a delicate situation and the university plays a gigantic role in, in this, in this, um, <laughs> bridge towards state rights and citizenship right yeah and how would that affect a distributed university maybe you always need a proxy university for it to be actually inclusive so that's a thought yeah that's actually proxies generally is an interesting thought because that idea you raised is very much tied to this power legitimacy area and this is why it's hard to get like really you get these rights by having the sort of legitimacy, which is the like the thing that you get with money and power, but but now that you open the proxy, that's that's an easier step uh, of uh, like uh, loaning power in a way. That um, that if you have a distributed university, you could have a proxy strategy. That you probably don't have proxies in the beginning, but if you start getting somewhere, you start talking with other universities of hey, you don't have to proxy everything for us, but what about this course um, or this particular thing? Can you proxy this? Or this particular, uh, what's it called, like curriculum, like um, like a series of courses in a way, like a, um, or field or... So proxies offer a step easier way to get to those kind of um, power politics of giving people access what and so on another interesting area to look at like in addition to a kind of course rights is like what is the paradigm of say succeeding in a course succeeding in getting 
a degree, etc., and so on. And like, I think it's a paradigm that has some potential alternatives. Like, like I think the course level, or like very loosely speaking, course like this sort of package, um, is is one interesting area to look at because I think it's the uh, it's kind of highly it's also experimental, but it's also problematic. Like people have different approaches, but but um, one of the kind of common paradigms it's 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 often, for example, a useless text, world's perspective. It's it's not even expected to go anywhere else, um, and it's not expected to be interesting to read even, because it's so tailored towards making um, um, making a uh, uh, like certain points of competency or whatever, but that in itself is almost like wait. Uh, it's a very wasteful process um, in and of itself. Um, so moving the question of the, I think it's still a kind of question of the proof in the very wide sense of a proof, but it's in the concept of a proof um, to to uh, like that general interest is a motivating factor there um as is uh, is i think an interesting one um um as a as um as a possibility to look at and then one could think of other ways like um i think there's even some positive in the sense that it creates a representation out of itself because it then creates something to the world but of course, you could have the proof um, interact with others proving you. This kind of sort of reputation side of things, like that. It's it's like um, that ten people acknowledge the work you did in the course is is the is the validation rather than the teacher saying at the end you passed and this is your grade. Um, I find this particularly relevant to uh, design a path for abolishing grades. Like they're just yeah. such a source of um, confrontational evil. Um, yeah, like there's definitely should be dealt with. And this distributed again, sort of um, proof of <laughs> what to say. Proof of sufficiency, proof of commitment, mm. proof of um, time. I'm, yeah. I'm not sure. Depending on the curse, different structures should arise, right? But yeah, I find that very relevant. Yeah, those different perspectives to the proof you just mentioned are really good to think about. Like, I, I think it's clear that really grades don't work. Um, like because like even if you think of university the grade might work for the course but they kind of decay and then ultimately when you go out of the university let's say all the grades you get for particular courses are really almost non-information um, and it, even if you get the grade for the whole uh, for the whole degree it, it, it doesn't have much matter which all proves that you can quite easily put the grades or even aside, just leave them, and then you don't lose much. But then what you gain is that the structure is now more free, more flexible to be designed. If there's no grade involved, it's it's merely a proof of pa uh, kind of passing or proof of time or proof of um, uh, effort or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever had to do this, maybe in the past, uh, before the, the uh, EU homologated kind of the university situation, but the transferring your grades from like a non-EU school mm. to an EU school and having that, there's like formulas, right? Like mm. if you go from, you went to a French school and you want to transfer that back to Mexico, there's like, okay, you divide this by two and you add two because you know, French schools are really tough, right? So you add these two extra kind of like, where do these numbers come from, right? Like it's, mm. uh, it's yeah. actually insane, yeah. Hey, uh, this, this might be a slight st sl side note, but, uh, but something came to my mind now that we live in a, even the 
pand pandemic times, uh, something I have uh, tried uh, is that if if I'm having a course and uh, and uh, especially if there are let's say there are participants from the uh, Uniarts Open University, maybe some people are from the Helsinki University and then some are uh, from Alta University and so on. And there there is a nice group. And and of course when you when you come in some university, you have a it's it's so wide selection what you can actually have. You can take mm. this course or this course and this faculty or this program and or so on. Mm -hmm. Something uh, that uh, after you pass this course uh, and let's say you are having it on Teams, for instance. So uh, after the course is over, uh, you leave the Teams open uh, and try to facilitate as a discuss uh, kind of discussion board where people can can still uh, uh, have those uh, connections they made through the course mm. and kind of therefore kind of being networked. And uh, next year there is a course again, and those people will come if they can come into the same kind of uh, platform and, and they join a club kind of. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah. So kind of uh, uh, just like what is the what is the reward? One reward can be that after you pass this course, uh, you you have this like uh, you have this space uh, mm. that is kind of self-governed or something like that. Yeah, kind of per persistent networking. Like I, I think the idea that the course channel whatever persists and and then there can be a natural development and somebody never communicates there again but that's fine but somebody actually stays there and that is also a kind of interesting presence in terms of like that they already have gone through the course so they 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 kind of offering might be different in this sense like a um uh like uh, yeah, that's that's I think an interesting structure to uh, like persistent networking maybe uh, uh, persistent communication channels uh, well, yeah. and it, yeah also connects to this sort of because I, I think this kind of structure should have at least solve like be able to function completely online um, uh, it, even even though. I, I think actually, if you solve it in in a manner that it's able to function completely online, physical space becomes quite interesting, because then you can think of physical space as as a kind of a almost like a plugin, that it goes back to proxies, for example, but it goes to, um, you know, for this course we also add the plugin of a cafe, in the center of the city which is a meeting place or for this session we have this children's park uh, and it's optional but like you can look at it that way um like of course it can also be required but like like it, it becomes this sort of dynamic uh element the physical uh space which i i think is like an interesting possibility um, um in itself um, because it opens up the physical space becomes kind of more also playful one thing that came to mind from the inventory mm, this is sort of wacky idea i don't know if it works but or I think while well, in a certain game of university it could work, is that what you gain out of the course is marked in your inventory. And then you're able to pass it on and to uh to or give it to others. Maybe you don't lose it or you can think about it in different ways. Um uh but uh like it's interesting to think about because like the list of your courses is almost like an inventory anyway. It's very, very close, like looking at your sheet of student and I have these courses, it's very much an inventory. Um, so if it would have these sort of qualities of being able to pass on, it's, it's an interesting possibility itself.
I'm, I'm thinking about how inventories, like uh, the um, sort of threshold between the digital inventory, the physical inventory, the physical infrastructure, part of an inventory, and then how to, um, yeah, like the ownership models, I think could be worked out in a better way. Like I feel at least in my university experiences, there's always like um, the presence of an authority kind, kind of detaches you from the feeling of ownership of um, physical mm. space in the sense that you are ultimately, it's not ultimately yours. So how to foster sort of like a more belonging with the infrastructure would be interesting to think. And I'm not sure what the answer is. To, to start that off, you can immediately change the language from ownership to rights. Mm -hmm. Because right, rights are really kind of like a bony package of rights. Like any, and, then, and actually, ownership is kind of complicated because ownership of different things is actually different rights. Like ownership of a car is different from an ownership of a house, but in often subtle ways. Uh, but it, but it, like you can take any ownership and say, let's analyze it down to rights and you can cover everything. But then if you analyze it down to rights, you can look at it also modularly. So, um, so like if you can say like, oh, this ownership actually means that this person has the, the, the right to um, use this, move this, transact this to somewhere else. You're already kind of like in a much more modifiable land because then you can say okay this person has the right to use this but not transact this and you you start to loosen the heart the boniness of ownership um uh, and then you also create this middle ground where um the, the people can have what could be called like a sense of ownership but um like more that the, it's more theirs as well because of this middle rights or um, and and that there is not this sort of sole owner versus everybody else uh, kind of division uh, so I, I think definitely one should think about this kind of structure in terms of not ownership but really like what are our rights to this actually if I kind of analyze this like if I take the OPOC like analytics could call it analytics, structure analytics. So say there's principles. Uh, I'm modifying along the way. Might 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 be buggy. Warning. So so those principles say that say that everyone can create a scene. And there is a template of certain roles that you can take. You can pick this role or that role or this role. But but like say all the roles have the right to create uh, a scene. And scene, of course, can be temporary or persistent. So, so for example, a course can be a scene, but a certain place where a courses take place can be a scene with scenes in it, and so on. So, um, so say there's this role that um, you um, you can uh, you can create a scene, and you create the scene of uh, let's say you listed uh, like topics of interest like what are the thematics we're processing you you put in in and so the methods of approach and and then you create a scene within that which is like a first interaction and then you open that to anyone or to certain people so in in a way of rights that scene that they can come in and and you even distribute this participant so then further rights to that scene. This is kind of providing like um well high still like very bird's eye view, but kind of analytics towards uh how you can have a network university. Because then you can think of like this scene has rights to that scene or, or this scene relates to that scene by giving them rights to open up scenes within it, like essentially make courses or whatever it is. So, you, so you're kind of already one step closer to structuring um, it.
I don't know, does that make sense? Yeah, I think it does. Would you say courses are scenes, scene offers, an offer to create a scene? So I, I think the difference between scene and an offer is, uh, is really like this litmus test of offer is potential. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like uh, um, that a structure that is actually inside, say, an organization is, uh, is, is a scene. And if you have the same scene, but it's not, nobody's acknowledged it, it's, uh, it's an offer. It's, it's somehow like, oh, this could happen. So that's the, like, I, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's mentioned in the Obok text that, like, essentially you, like, structurally you could say that the offers don't need to be there. But, but pragmatically, you could say that it's very important to think about um, like what exists for what and what doesn't. And, and that's, that's why um, offer might be useful. So in a way, like uh, say a particular scene and kind of a, a weird university-like thing um, wants to make a course-like thing in the in another but it doesn't have the rights but it can mm -hmm. offer so the offer kind of transitions over this uh uh well it essentially makes it possible that the network is not static like it like uh like it's like it makes this offer and if they accept it the, the network has changed uh, like it's a way to kind of define a particular change as potential and if it's then accepted or committed to, the change becomes an actuality in itself. I'm curious if it's helpful to try and distill or, or find like the essence of certain, um, yeah, of the course, for example, how atomized can a course be like what's the single unit that composes a course when is does something actually start to look like a course or it's something else mm -hmm. it's like an interesting a, question there's a there's a plan there's there's a goal i guess mm -hmm. um you could frame it as a goal mm -hmm there's certain filters that will be mm, utilized yeah. throughout and ah, what else there's i guess some rights some access to infrastructure probably you some know, rules setting some rules. methods yeah mm -hmm. methods potential Cor courses that require a workshop that require certain software whatnot yeah requirements and rules that set like this is how it works like um, yeah. there is a meeting every week optional or or required or something like this yes um and of motifs topics of interests and questions persistent questions i i think it also kind of points out to like like for hacking maybe course is a good starting word but i'm Sensing that it's 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 probably has to, it will become like a problem at some point, like um, because it's it's also like um, uh, I think this same general system can also um, uh, address something like a paper or those kind of structures in universities, um, um, uh, and it might be interesting if it does if paper like thing can have a gradual transition between being interactive because courses are thought as interactive and papers are thought as well uh, only read which is an interaction but not otherwise interactive but if you have the possibility of thinking about that as gradual well there is this paper but there is a particular way of reading it or interpret interpreting it which you can take part well, of course, normally that would be thought of as a course, but I think it's an opening idea if it's thought of as like a, that it comes with a certain interaction. 
connected to the document. I, I'm just thinking about related to causes. Uh, of course, they can be afraid to, well, now we have this class tomorrow and so on. But, but, but also like, uh, okay, we have learning objectives. So, which is probably kind of, that is the thing that comes from the kind of, uh, that is state validated or so on, that mm. kind of uh, is transfer, transferred from the uh, curriculums and so on. But, uh, and, and you, need, you, you would need to be able to kind of uh, mm, evaluate that. But also some, some courses, if they have a, let's say, uh, requirements are like active attendance. You need to be active uh, during the course uh, and you need to be able to kind of uh, vali validate this uh, somehow. Mm. Then again, uh, usually the other, other structure at least is uh, Mm, one structure is like exercises, no matter what type of exercises they are. Like, uh, mm, and, and uh, one interesting thing that could be uh, a, a little different from what, what, what it is today, but like, uh, let's say, uh, uh, or if you are doing kind of collaborative uh, exercises that uh, you could actually mm, let's say you have a certain amount of tokens or something like that, you could, you would have, let's say, this course has uh, seven exercises and, and, and now like you need to choose uh, uh, which are those exercises that you will, go, you will contribute more and which are those exercises you are kind of uh, do, doing less work and, and concentrating on these or something like, some, something like that. Mm. If there is a, like collaborative practices uh, included, then I would guess that that then it's peer to peer kind of uh, evaluation is also a possibility and so on for mm. active attendance. Yeah, yeah. Um, and more one can create those uh, participations into a form of like an output. Uh, the less you have to do to kind of provide proof of a presence or or and something like that mm, like a, uh, i mean there are complexities in that as well but it's i think it's an interesting form um uh, in itself like uh like 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 however you prove that you took part in this exercise and that exercise is that there is some output um, from you on towards that exercise and output can, can be really anything, but just to think about it that way. Um, I, I think that's, that is a possibility. And then you can think about acknowledgements of the output in itself, which yes, has this some danger and uh, dangerous certainly of a social game, but, uh, but it's also like, um, mm, I don't think it's like even if it has problems. I, I I think it's a very viable direction with some some cautions. Um, uh, and it it also opens up like ultimately. Um, like there, there's this um, uh, this kind of early thought, but I'll try to be very short with it. Like. Like ultimately, when you come from university, how you use the degree is actually not purely the degree itself, or less and less so, like very little so nowadays. But rather, you create some package. I mean, often something like portfolio, which then uh, where the degree is an element, but you create the the form, the face. It's kind of a work itself that you utilize to. Uh, have the benefit of your learnings. And why I'm saying that is because if there is all these outputs and the outputs are kind of coordinated or the kind of the, the general references that they are trying to be not waste, like, uh, like trying to make something that is generally useful, like of course to your competences and whatnot, but like, the one way to think about it is everything you've done in the university is your material to create that work that you then interface to the outside world when you're trying to present your 
university uh, ex experience and your learnings there. Um, so, so the more the uni uh, being in this university would make you produce material, and then if that university would emphasize actually that material as as its um, this output as its uh, main source, it would kind of be much more in correlation uh, with whatever like however you have to approach this world, which is utilizing your um, uh, or create this sort of work of interface. Um, yeah, a little bit um, fragmented, but like, I think it's an interesting thought. Hey, yeah. Uh, if you, you, if the university is about like collecting, collecting uh, kind of useful, useful mm. mat materials mm. uh, for your, for your inventory. Yeah. Then, yeah. then actually university is some sort of like a crafting system. Maybe. Yeah, 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 it is. Yes, uh, but it's it's somehow much more uh, po powerful thought than what is the current university paradigm of thought, which is a validification system. Like, um, but like starting from like let's make it uh, a crafting, um, which is crafting of information, crafting of tools, crafting of whatever. But like, um, but the crafting system is a, is an, i think a really interesting starting point of a different paradigm towards university i like i really like the that that uh, condensation of it. yes that's really good i'm thinking peko if you were sort of like identifying a dissonance between the goals of the university and the people who attend the, the university as like this source of tension mm -hmm. in, in what you mentioned previously mm -hmm. like the the goals are not aligned yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah and maybe this crafting system could align the goals Mm -hmm. of both like the structure itself, the authorities, let's say, and the mm -hmm. attendees were all engaged in this goal of um, crafting co context making, how to say, it's hard to, to put into words. There's also very different types of universities, right? Like scientific universities don't have the same goals as art universities. Maybe in some point they, they coincide, but, but not necessarily. Yeah, but now that kind of the thought is settling, like, and listening to you, like, I think it actually makes a whole lot of sense. Like, like if we think of it this way, you come to university, you come to any uh, uh, institution of learning to change, but also to produce, like, uh, to change and produce, like, that's, like, teaching is essentially a factor of change. Like something like or learning is a factor of change. Okay, so um, so if we then think about that, you would come to this university, and your main goal would be to craft things that you can show slash give to others. That would make them interested. There are many things, different things, and and because you would orient yourself constantly towards that direction you could potentially rely on that when you go to external activities of universities you're not showing your degree you're showing like hey there is this thing i made this might be useful it's less interesting it's less inspiring for you or maybe this thing or maybe that thing and that's the main avenue that's the kind of bypassing of credit i mean it's not perfect and it doesn't work like from immediately but i think it's a much more wholesome thought of bringing all of this into coherence and that yeah Mikael, you... i'm sorry my heart bleeds but i promised to leave uh, uh uh half past because we have this like sick uh yeah yeah, yeah. my par my uh, partner is sick so i need to leave but uh this was very much fun and i hope to be able to join uh next week sure yeah, yeah. i hope to see you again yeah yeah definitely Mikael. and and like i said like you can uh, whatever time you have is appreciated. And 
I think like just to kind of summarize, uh, I think there is actually games to be designed here. We can continue still, and maybe we could kind of start to outline those. But one possibility would be next time to take um, steps towards, okay, if we have these, this constellation of structures, like what, how would it turn into a game? Or, and it doesn't necessarily have to be game, a game game ultimately, but I think the game is a good tool to think about how would this practically work. And, and that would be an, maybe an interesting direction for uh, next time, just like to say to potentially entice Mika to come to next time. <laughs> or, or, but how does it sound to uh, you all? Yes, sounds good to me. Yeah, to me also, partially also because I was a part of a few kind of groups who are trying to explore some kind of distributed university or education contexts and it inevitably um, always failed or or like got to sleep so i'm really excited to be a part of this <laughs> kind of exploration and attempt yeah because i think like for me this is like really really yeah exciting context actually kind of um, ideating around some minimal viable distributed university <laughs> kind of thingy. Yeah, like, and this is actually one of the reasons why I'm thinking of the game form as well. Like I've, I've also studied a lot of these forms, uh, like I've been interested in the issue for several years. And one of the problems is that you know, when you're kind of creating it, people kind of want to create the game, the rules and the play at the same time. So it has to work practically and it has to work rules wise. But if you make a game, you have like two shots at it. Like, yes, you can make it into an actual thing that functions, but you're also kind of creating the, like, hey, somebody else could take this form. Uh, like that you're creating the rules, which then somebody says like, I like this one, but we'll change it this way. But in addition, you're enhancing the distributed possibility because somebody might start the same game even separate from you, even you unknowing, and run it in their play. And, and maybe you find that later to be an interesting connection. So it enhances the distributed possibilities if you create the game, uh, not just a, con a concrete play um, as well. Like, um, so, so yeah, like, uh, like I, I think that, would be a, like an interesting um, two ways to success uh, kind of possibility. Because, yeah, I, I think it's a, like, especially now that this sort of crafting and this direction open up, I think it kind of informs that there is an interesting um, social approach there but then it's in, uh opens up like also like what should the game support so to speak like um uh like for example what would be the interesting mechanics that course or whatever would actually kind of tailor and talk about what it allow uh, not just allows but enables you to craft um in the larger sense of craft that we're using and uh and because it's it's almost like an alternate perspective to what does the course allow you to learn. It, uh, but I think it's maybe a more efficient, better perspective because, like I think, saying the course allows you to learn this is often a false promise. It it might happen or might not. Like, and this is why often the grades don't work. Like, oh, this person is supposed to be a programmer or a historian, but I I don't see it at all. But they, you know, they called that because the whole paradigm is that the, what the, whatever uh, unit of learning is, it mainly communicates what it allows you to learn. Or what, yeah. But if it's a unit, if this unit rather communicates what it enables you to craft, it's closer. It's 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 like. Um, um, 
the quality is might of course still vary, but it's it's actually more in um, more directly connected uh, as a promise, and then more fertile as output, way more fertile as output. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I want to go back to it because this was very profound realization to me. This you mentioned like learning as a factor of change and transformation as a useful metric and sort of like instead of measuring a final number you measure the difference between mm -hmm. the starting point at the last point right like the, yeah. the, the delta i guess yeah. between two numbers yeah. and that that's just it allows for a more sensitive validation mm -hmm. it also allows for like there's a um direction in 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 the intentions that the university puts uh in motion i feel I, yeah. I even want to stop saying university and saying institutions of learning maybe mm. even drop the institutions and find yeah, a, yeah. a better word um, you, you need to, you, or whatever it is like an organization of course. yes could be. organization of learning yeah L learning organization of learning yeah, yeah. um and yeah, crafting has this transformation mechanic that uh, mm. really, yeah, really solidifies like a, a, an idea in my head. That's really nice. Yeah, and it, it's kind of opening up. I don't have to thought solidified yet, but like I can already see that if you define this kind of unit course, whatever, by trying to communicate what it allows you to craft, um, and what it, how it enables and what it enables in you <clears throat> it's <clears throat> it's much more or it can create this sort of <clears throat> differences in terms of um what is the paradigm of a course really and and yeah. like um then it comes to the question okay how does it enable me and and, and like uh, and also like how does it describe it and like and of course, there is crafting together and crafting alone. Like, uh, in a way, like the course can also be about crafting everybody together, something in, in itself. But it, it it's constantly this more open sense of the word crafting, crafting in the abstract, because it can be, you know, a sense of uh, knowledge or a sense of. Um, um, yeah, one one should define the kind of word crafting in 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 one's own way. I think it's a key component to communicate such a mm -hmm. thought. Yeah, for, for me also, what resonated kind of um, or or what um, what I um, think of when hearing craft or crafting. So when we were experimenting with kind of non-formal education here, one of the um, not metrics but one of the um, let's say criteria we were considering in terms of some kind of evaluation was the quality of the learning process so for example um the my colleague who is a, a like pedag pedagog pedagogician ped i don't know <laughs> pedagog uh, yeah. and a didact did I, I don't know how to say those yeah. words in english anyway so one of his um courses was um about kind of the meta process of learning and experiential reflective learning so it was a lot of practical habits of reflection and asking and helping the other person reflect and kind of deepen the experience and create your own metaphors and so it was kind of sustained like rigorous process of um learning from given experiences <clears throat> and so i liked the aspect of actually um if you are if you can prove that you've been uh, uh, applying those um, micro habits mm -hmm. or, uh, within your learning, whatever uh, is the subject, then this by itself is kind of, um, yeah, it can communicate or express some kind of value in the process. So, so this is what it was uh, kind of reminding me of this kind of process of cultivation of the dependable learning ability if, or mm. yeah that makes sense yeah l l let me do one trace like uh taking your comments in like one can trace it's not a summary of this whole because there's actually a lot of interesting ideas elsewhere as well but but this particular path is that we can approach 
learning as crafting and include the thought of crafting oneself. Like in a way, like learning and crafting oneself very much overlap. But why is the output important? It is important because uh, the, there is an element of proof, but rather than having a degree, which in, is an abstract <clears throat> value based, you you utilize the something that exemplifies the crafting, but also actually kind of exemplifies it by the fact that it's it's providing something potentially useful, and because it contains this uh, emphasis on this output, then the proof of your whole learning so to speak, is something that you can utilize everything that you output, and it's then your work to put those together to, to create this sort of general proof of what have you learned. So it, this also allows this last one also to think about the degree differently. Like it's, it's not about proving that you are a graphic designer. It's, it's like, I'm really good at 3D shapes or and, and or not not even 3D shapes, but I do these kind of things or I'm, I'm complex textures, but you can see it because of my outputs here. Uh, and so because it, it has much more uh, tailorability in terms of what you prove when you prove yourself by this sort of out, output or your kind of packaging from that output itself. Um, um, now, yeah, of course, there can be other systems there. There, there can be summary systems, etc. But this is very much a potential core material. Like, the, and I think it's potential core because it's hitting many buttons at once. Like, whereas normal learning teaching universities is almost like creating a new button for everything. And it's an abstract button. Like now we create this degree system and now we create this evaluation system. And now we create this um, uh, like a test, which is just, the test has no outer, outer use, but it's a test because we have to have this evaluation. So we create a separate fragmented system for everything. Whereas this is more looking at how is everything pressing every button of what should be happening. I'm I'm thinking if it would be useful and maybe not. I'm not saying it it, it is, but if it might be useful to retroactively think of our sword OBOC sessions as a course, as a as a learning mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. yes. and, um, yeah, and, and how to put sort of like our own experience into this model. Yes. Maybe that clarifies some things. I, I think that's a great thought. And it's actually, I think it's a very healthy thought that it would also be like question for everyone. Like, and, and of course, everyone is crafting something the same, but also a little bit different. Um, and there's also this sort of crafting oneself, but how does the crafting oneself appear? Um, like, because it opens up in a way, like I think it's potentially empowering. It allows to say, actually, this is how I'm thinking about it. Of course, it can change what you want, but but like it, like this is what I'm thinking. I'm actually changing in myself what I'm crafting here, and and maybe um, this in this form for it made together or alone or in pairs or whatever it is might be an interesting form for it yes yeah i think it might be super interesting for example um to know what ha what have my learnings be like i don't know snippets or uh, insights that i've had in these sessions coming mm -hmm. kind of clean into mm -hmm. this world in comparison to yours peko you know that mm -hmm. you, yeah. you've been you maybe you have more you've uh your delta of change has not been as huge as mine since i've like gone from zero to whatever we are now um but you might have acquired sort of like a sophisticated learnings which are much yeah, more certainly. nuanced right than me just realizing like ah okay organizations and games can be the same thing right which is yeah. absolutely profound but yet very simple right yeah. like the comparison in that in that um learning might be very revealing i feel yeah yeah it's really like it also fits this idea that i think it's good to think about this uh 
for the next session, but it fits this like um, that first of all, while it's solving or redrafting what is university, it's, it's, it's sort of a wider question. And it's also then a question that, you know, potentially eat your own dog food. That it, it might be the question for this group. Maybe this group is already potentially an example of the structure which allows us to play test as a group the, the structure and potentially change it, hack it, whatever. That, um, uh, like, uh, because I mean, now that you open it up to this group, it, it's immediately kind of a fertile question. And it's, it's already sort of like an early proof that it, these structures are interesting. And because they're not only university, then they apply to this context as well. Like, um, uh, so, so maybe this, this is really uh, a question also for our organization and the organization of these sessions and how do we view them. But, but what do you think? Should we, should we take this? Uh, I mean, this can be, this uh, board can be shared, uh, I think op openly, ho hopefully. Um, I can check it now that it's on my, but I mean, one can make a screenshots uh, collection if, 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 because I was thinking of sharing it in Telegram. But I think the, uh, this is more like, um, I could almost call it like a thematic structuring. It's not just themes, it's certainly structuring, but it's, it's like what is actually important, what is interesting here, what is things to focus on, what are the things that orient, where are the power lines and, and so on, these kind of things. And, but then utilizing that, one can think of, okay, um, what are the kind of mechanics? What is a role? What is a way uh, to um, create a scene or however we approach it? Um, something that kind of taps into these power lines and, and kind of utilizes these structures. Like, um, and, and one could kind of make a, a kind of game design slash also playtesting session, like trying some structures for this, even in this sort of very small window, like we like tried on some earlier structures, like a, like a one moment in, inside uh, this and test that. Uh, so the next session could be this sort of design slash playtesting, um, taking this as the uh, underlying thematic structure and where to create the game from. Mm -hmm. And perhaps what what um, I would find useful, mm. at least um, briefly, and just to go over this kind of messy um, uh, recording, and perhaps uh, get a little bit like practice the actual analysis using the game concept. So, for example, uh, I have already pre-sketched something like okay, so there is this concept of a course or a paper or a credit or a proof. And then we could uh, like discuss briefly like uh, what would what would, how would how would we express it through the language of the games or the mm -hmm. obok we are crafting? Yeah. yeah. So for example, when there is I don't know there is the yeah uh, let's say um, yeah any any of the elements that we discussed. So so we could like perhaps say oh yeah this this would be a character it, mm -hmm. it has those moves and they are expressed I don't know in the uh, university codec or, or yeah, just just try a little bit more formal analysis of how it's yeah. working and how the game concepts can be used to clarify the lines and connections perhaps yeah I, I think that's that's almost required to get to this sort of game structures or at least a good first step to go uh, like um I think like um looking at roles and what kind of rights one puts in them is also one good starting point because it kind of starts to concretize 
things like oh, isn't elite always answers the question what do people do do here um and 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 already kind of cr creates his first lines of um like if you set the rights to create a scene like a course <clears throat> then with those rights you are already thinking of what kind of uh things you want to push with that etc um so um so yeah like like i can promise that i will certainly uh, do such analysis like from this over, over the week but we could kind of visit that in the beginning uh in the kind of analysis jacob you uh described and then um maybe have some proposals of like uh like on on top of that um uh, like how could one make a playable game a social game from this um like i know that the paradigm of game is, is often this sort of closed environment but like the games and organizations i uh idea kind of points out that this is really just a convention like uh that um like organizations actually kind of want to have certain element of closeness to to, them, to have an identity in a way like that they're not just um anything and um and similarly games if you build um a relation from the game um to the outside like say you uh like people play poker for money or whatever are just as capable of building outside relations as organizations so having this kind of university game uh can certainly kind of fulfill all the structural uh requirements of like you know people playing in different places they can be thought of as both kind of like separate games or game sessions but then if the other game session actually accepts whether it's a course or a paper or uh, from the other you're creating these relations and they are you have a whole palette of thinking about like how do you give it a right or where do you give it a right etc like um, um and and that's the network creation um that you're creating the network like channel by channel but every channel is expressible uh, um like in a way rights are inherently network created uh so and the other case I was thinking about, but we won't go to it now, but I kind of mention it because it kind of actually creates some interesting perspective towards it. Because what I was thinking was the, like what happens to um, these things like RPG worlds, which are uh, like, they are these sort of official worlds like Forgotten Realms and so on. As, as kind of an organization, because they they are actually a very interesting organizational existence is because like somebody just decides to create a new city or, t or like run a particular city that somebody else has described. And suddenly in their game, there is much more specific details are about a certain shopkeeper and so on. And they might communicate those details and then somebody uses those details. Somebody creates a so-called adventure, and that's a kind of pathway in that world, certain series of events, but uh, but somebody creates something else. And it actually creates this very much a shared, um, very complex uh, shared organization. Um, and while some of them are under commercial licenses, it's, it's actually many of them that are not are the really interesting ones. And while I kind of wanted to shortly mention that is that if you think of that, like say, how do people share, I don't know, to you say forgotten realms. And then you think of how do you share university, like that you, you acknowledge certain things that there is the city and there is this, and the university is about um, acknowledging certain things as well. There is a kind of interesting overlap with that um like and and that's another thing i will think about like what can be learned from the, that kind of context like an existence of a socially shared game world 
um, uh, and socially actable game world uh, versus the university uh, per the kind of deeper dive we did this time because I think that's that's an interesting learning point as well. Yeah, that that sounds definitely very interesting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like it, it really overlaps because like even somebody's if somebody's description and rules for a certain person become commonly referred like a, a major source and it's not even kind of by authority necessarily it can be just people like it and then uh underneath that is a branching because like people commonly go to the source and say oh this and this wizard can do this and this and they are this and this by their personality but then they take them into their games and they kind of branch the, into their own reality that in it it relates to the fact that uh, this it relates to the description because they take some of the personality traits and the skills and the spells and whatever, but they also play their own instance, which means that the game is slightly different, but it connects to the others. And that's an interesting thought in terms of um, like what is what comes from university and becomes a reference point to others. Any, anyway, it's, a, it's another kind of worms, but, but but yeah, um, um, not to open it too much because it's it's already a lot. This, but I, I think like coming back to this sort of this thematics uh, here, uh, the lines of this sort of crafting um, and and the emphasis on that, and taking it next time as a, as a kind of. Uh, a target for structuring a bit, like Jakob said, and then uh, looking at where does it, what kind of designs it would uh, like channel to. Because like quite quickly you could have, you know, 0 0.001 interesting get sketches of games of universities, which you can also still offer just as games, not just particular session of play. Uh, but like a game that somebody else can start elsewhere or hack from. Yeah, I guess a good metric for success could be, and this is not for me to decide, but if whatever we are talking about right now maps as well to what Martin is doing with, with mm -hmm. his work in the residency, right? Which is also a yes. learning environment. Yes. Like if we're able to bridge between the two without not many distinctions maybe we can surpass the university mm -hmm. uh, umbrella and and speak more broadly about learning environments i think very much so i was thinking about it while we were drawing this that this is actually kind of like starting to resonate with with that so i think that's one case maybe to take to this case like if one starts to design it would be like utilizing this kind of format because like even this like approach to crafting is a uh, is an i think a development towards this learning idea which was at the heart like you said you know of martin's idea so that's something to talk about yeah and i, I just had a call with my colleague from the um, faculty of pedagogy and mm -hmm. they are having some kind of like um, grant funding competition for the students to be um, proposing um, like innovative uh, things for uh, for the faculty or across um, yeah so I will share with him this video mm -hmm. <laughs> when it's recorded yeah I'll I'll try to uh, get it as soon as I get the all the authentication but i'll i'm still aiming sunday it often leads to monday but like i'll try to pester people a little bit earlier but that would be great and um and i think like uh uh there could be also other interest if one creates even like a early version of like um these sort of structures yeah because it's a different discussion than just starting 
the university somewhere and then like facing uh, often quite intrapassable hurdles of the practical reality and so on. Of course, we can do that, but but yeah, like I I think, uh, but let's go from there. I think we're all a bit tired. It was a lot to think about, but it's it's. I think it's a good kind of tiredness because, yeah, it comes from using your mind, mental fitness. Yeah, <laughs> great session. Yeah, yeah, I I agree, um, and I'll figure out the way to share the document. Uh, maybe you already know it, but like because it was in my account, like, and I can try to find the way to. Hopefully, there is like a just then you can give an open, um, but I'll I'll check that. Any last comments? All right. So nobody gets the last word. This is not the last word. This is a meta word. Uh, I will uh, uh, st stop the recording first. Uh, stop sharing and then stop the.